Well, I think it's time to maybe get a little more nostalgic here and just add a few more topics to my personal log here. As I'm going to start this series within the series, I'm going to call this Gamey Memories. And this is definitely uh, the most nostalgic I'm going to be with Gaming Memories, as here are Bursa Vlog number 54. I thought I could squeeze in some time to uh, make some personal vlogs in between all my sports content here. But I'm going to call this one Gaming Memories dash NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System. And I'm going to say this is definitely the one video game system. I'm definitely have the most nostalgia for it and definitely uh, grew up with and uh, loved growing up. I mean, it was definitely the first full time system I remember Nintendo Entertainment System. It's a short for NES or NES, whatever you call it. And you know, it's interesting how kids today look at these games. I mean, definitely it's not as deep and is not as graphic and as detailed as games today but that's what I grew up with I was just I mean just missed the uh, I mean I was born in 82 apparently 1983 was the supposed video game crash that happened and people thought it was a fad when you had like the Famicom and the television and Atari I do have some very brief memories of the Atari, and I had a friend growing up that had an Atari that occasionally got dusted off, but uh, I mean Nintendo Entertainment System at the time was very revolutionary because it, the graphics were definitely more state-of-the-art than when you look at the you know, Atari, the television, ColecoVision, even Commodore 64, and apparently video games started and we have the Pong, but even then, that Pong was inspired, apparently, there was a Pong on an oscilloscope back in the 60s there. Something you can look into. But yeah, that, that was, this was revolutionary. It brought the video game industry back, and it's definitely stronger than ever and a lot more competitive. But at the time, when the Nintendo Entertainment System came out, they were looking at doing it more than just being a console. I didn't remember having Rob the Robot there and apparently those games are terrible and I've seen online and consensus are that those games are terrible. However, I did remember in the family we had Nintendo Entertainment System. It was bundled with the Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt and we had the gun. The uh, Zapper I think it was called if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, definitely had fun with that. Definitely Duck Hunt, and uh, definitely a lot more nostalgia, and definitely like the Duck Hunt even more now as a Flames fan, as the Anaheim Ducks are definitely uh, one of the teams I definitely on the dislike list there with the Oilers, Ducks, and the Lightning after 2004. But because uh, it does feel like it, when we don't beat the Ducks, that that dog is laughing at us when we don't like the Ducks. And I feel the joy when that dog comes up. He's like, hey, I got ducks. Well, yeah, definitely had lots of uh, members of that. And actually, it's a lot more complicated now. I mean, now with the flat screen TVs and different imports now, we're, we're all on HDMI. I mean, definitely get a, you definitely have to understand what the you know, AC output is and you know the VGI, or I think it is. Now it's all HDMI. It's hard to hook up. But even then, apparently the zapper worked where the, apparently the screen temporarily goes black and white, and that's where the target is. And if the zapper sees the target, it uh, there's videos on that talking about why the zapper doesn't work on modern TVs today, but it did work on the older tubular TVs. But anyway, it's definitely very nostalgic on that. But and also there was that clay fight, which is kind of skeet shooting, you know. Discs are thrown in the air and you'll shoot. That's definitely another game within the game. But Super Mario Brothers, man. The original Super Mario Brothers, man. That's uh, very nostalgic for that. I mean, I remember seeing that for the first time. I was like, man, that's cool. Boy, bringing blocks and getting coins. Mushrooms. Hmm. 
Maybe some people who are on that too much dependent must be a huge, huge Super Mario fan. You guys, everything's based around mushrooms. And you always think, oh, it's a mushroom. You're big. And you get, ah, you're small. And then you avoid those brown mushrooms like Goombas and then Koopas and, and uh, those cheap peeps. Oh, man. And I don't like those Hammer Brothers. And then I guess we've got Browser, or Bowser. Not confused with Browser. We use that word more. But it definitely was a huge thrill. Like I won the Stanley Cup when I beat the uh, beat that game, World 8-4. Oh man. And also that unlimited limited lives trick in World 3 there. But then you almost feel a little gangsta and extra secret. How you know how to get those shortcuts, you know. 1-2 to get to level 4, 4-2 to get to you know, World 8. And then, you know, that's what inspired the speed runs on there, but Definitely, definitely feel very nostalgic on Super Mario Brothers and the very first game. Then I got stunned about, oh, this is, what's this green guy? And it was Luigi. So, red and green, I mean, definitely red is a fair color with Super Mario. You know, definitely a plumber. Definitely made a very terrible movie. That definitely uh, didn't go over well, but I think this was also the era where you find out that great video games make terrible movies and I'll get to that later in this video here but yeah I mean that's definitely most nostalgic for that game and also at the time this is a Canadian show kind of tie in with this and that is uh there was a Sharon Lewis and Brown elephant show and one of the songs that they sang is skinny rinky dinky dink I love you but for some reason you know that underground theme with uh on Super Mario I somehow hear that together, skinny rinky dinky dink for some reason. I don't know, it's just my young mind going crazy and being very imaginative there. I actually remember one time, because I know that uh, on the, uh, it was, I was a CBC article, it's a Canadian Broadcast Corporation. I remember making a comment and it mentioned the song skinny rinky dinky dink and I, I put down, I kind of heard, I kind of hear that song in the Super Mario Underground theme and they sort of kind of agreed. I don't know. I, I, I sort of hear that with the old school underground theme. But, you know, it's just all the turtles you kick, goombas you smash, coins you get, those secret one-ups, and uh, make sure you get the star and you run like crazy, the unlimited lives trick, and, uh, you know, showing how proud you beat the game, and then, then it's a matter of how fast you beat the game by cheating and yeah, those are good times. But then Super Mario Brothers, you know, got really refined. I mean, you got to wonder, the second, I mean, here in North America, I mean, Super Mario Brothers 2 was still a great game. It was definitely a different adventure. But it was totally different from the first one, where, uh, you know, instead of uh, busting blocks and running through worlds, you know, you're uh, throwing enemies and vegetables and that, and you got introduced to four characters. But then that mystery came out that apparently there was going to be a Super Mario Brothers 2. But it was only released in Japan. That's why we called it the Lost Lives, Lost Levels. Where apparently they thought it was going to be too difficult for us. So they had a, another Super Mario 2. Which was based on the Doki Doki Panic. Which is based on the same thing. Everything's the same. Same characters, except the main characters are different, and it was definitely a different game, but it was still a great game. It's definitely still a classic, and uh, I mean, I definitely still. But I felt that it was definitely a much more difficult game, and I know that uh, it, it only had seven worlds, but they were longer worlds, and uh, I always remember that uh, it was much more difficult to get through that level seven, world seven, uh, level two, and finally beat the wart. Maybe this is where uh, kids get the impression vegetables are bad. Because <laughs> eventually you feed the vegetables in wart. And he chokes off and dies. And then it turned out to be a little dream. Spoiler alert if uh, don't watch that. But I definitely found that to be a lot more difficult game. Despite the fact they said that the Lost Levels was. I played a little bit of that. And you do chase mushrooms. But there are certain mushrooms you don't want to catch. Because they would kill you. Or shrink you if you took the Firefly, but it was definitely a nice different adventure there. 
And then the, uh, definitely the best Super Mario game, just on the NES, definitely was number three. So it kind of came back to the original roots. But it sort of had that choose your own adventure there. And, uh, you know, you got the same old enemies, Koopas and Goombas. And back to beating Bowser and, I mean, Princess Peach. She might need to do a better job of defending herself because she always seems to have to get captured and Mario has to cat rescue the day. But, I mean, it definitely had, you know, the eight worlds there. And then that was Super Mario Brothers 3, which I say is the best of the three Super Mario's, but we needed one to get the three. I mean, it, it had a very level of difficulty. I mean, uh... I mean, I always seem like with most video games, especially early video games, I seem to like the first level the best. Because it seems to get you into the game more and, you know, all the backgrounds and everything. It's all based on level one. But yeah, it gets you a feel for the game. But I remember uh, one of uh, Koopa's kids, which, uh, you know, was after Mario in Super Mario 3. The boss is how you feel at the end after you finally go up the castle on the ship there, and it's actually frustrating when you have to, uh, either suddenly have to get hit by a hammer brother on the base, or the ship moving, and you gotta go through the ship again. That's definitely frustrating, but I remember World 3. I always seem to always get stuck on the boss there, and I, I seem to got stuck there that I couldn't finally get to 4. But as eventually, you, you know, go through your groin page, grate your teeth. Eventually got through all that, and, you know, it was definitely a thrill to, uh, beat Super Mario Brothers 3 as well, where uh, I think if I remember that one, basically you kind of have to hope he eventually just kills himself. As I mentioned, you've, you go up into the castle, and uh, I remember you just have to watch out for him to, you know, stomp, and eventually the brick floor that he stomps, he falls in the pit, and game over, and he wins, and everyone's good again. And then I just always remember all that, uh, oh yeah, the, the Koopa. Kids, they apparently, of uh, the king of that world, eventually gets transformed, and then Toad's like, Help! Help! I mean, that, uh, and then you always remember that, you always fall down, and the scepter comes back, and the king's like, I'm my old self again. Ah, it's a great time, and I just got Super Mario. I mean, another series that I absolutely loved on uh, Nintendo was Mega Man. I definitely was a I definitely loved Mega Man and apparently it was the first Mega Man I was exposed to wasn't until Mega Man 3. I personally owned 3 and 4 growing up. But I actually think number 2 was the best Mega Man. Game. I don't know what it is with Mega Man 2. But it's the best one. I mean, I never got to play the uh, first one until later when I'll talk about a game of memories later. When it was a part of a collection. But number two was the, always the best one. But I never owned it. I remember we had a mom and pop video store. It was actually called the Video Barn near the neighborhood where I grew up. And I rented that game several times. And uh, I actually did find the soundtrack was awesome. And uh, you could definitely look online and definitely can jam to uh, Mega Man tunes. I actually think it had the best soundtrack. Especially, <coughs> excuse me, I think the best songs for the stages, I mean, yeah, Woodman and Metal Man definitely had interesting, but then when you get to the Dr. Wiley, of course, the, everyone loves the uh, Dr. Wiley stage one and two, but then three and four also kind of had that dark, eerie tone. And then, the thing is, here's the kind of a rant I have with the... Uh, Mega Man 2, and also a couple times I've played it with the Game Genie, which is kind of cheating, but you put codes in. But then eventually I had a Game Genie where there was no code where you never run out of weapons, but you never die. And the one thing you got to be careful for when you play Mega Man 2 is the fact that you progress through the game, you get to the dark. I mean, to choose your own venture, that's what also was unique with the Mega Man with the Mega Man series. I mean, first one only had six bosses and each one was named Man and then had, you know, the whole level was themed around the boss, which I found that neat and you got your staple enemies thrown in and then there's a two in there, but you beat those bosses and then you get that weapon. 
And it's kind of a rock, paper, scissors thing because you got, you know, one weapon that's strong like this boss, and another weapon that's completely useless, and you can use that to uh, advance. But, well, there's one weapon you absolutely need in the Mega Man 2 stages. And you might know what I'm getting at, but you go through one, you beat that dragon. And uh, I think how they designed that game, hopefully visually you don't have one of that case where you get seizures because every time you play that game in the dark and you beat that dragon, it's all flashes. I could see seizures could potentially get triggered from that, but you beat the dragon. And then the second one in Mega Man 2, the uh, second um, level in the Dr. Wily stage, you beat some, uh, you go inside some jar thing and it's like, you know, Robot blocks that come shoot at you. you. You beat that, and then you go to three, and then you beat this rolling thing. But number four, this is where you gotta be careful, because after four, you go to five where you beat the bosses again, and then you beat Dr. Y that happens to be a dummy robot. And then it had an interesting ending, which, God, I want you to go on YouTube, I don't wanna say what it is, but let's say Bubble Man, you need that for the final, final, final battle. But going back to stage four there, all it is, I mean, the crash van weapon allows you to bring, bust through wind walls. But you need the crash man and your, one of your items to go up platforms. But it's just a bunch of, you know, orbs that shoot at you. And uh, you have to watch your crash man power meter closely. And you have to figure out where to use them. Because once you're out of the crash, man, you're, you're, you're screwed. It's definitely if, uh, you know, if you're cheating with the Game Genie. And, uh, yeah, I never got past that until I got the collection later and I figured it out. And that was this was before the time when, you know, YouTube was around. And, uh, you know, you get to watch on YouTube and people figured out things and share it to the world. But yeah, I just didn't like that boss just the way it was designed. But uh, you're screwed if you run on a crash man weapon afterwards. You're, you would have to somehow just have to restart it back with Dr. Wiley. But it was still a great game. And it definitely had a surprise ending. But I... And then, of course, if you use the game team, it screws up the awesome password with a glitch. But I own 3 and 4. and 3 was a close second. Definitely another... Choose your own venture, and that's when they added an, another, you know, villain that you were going after, which happens to be brainwashed by Dr. Wily. I remember Dr. Cossack, but that was, uh, that was Mega Man 4. Mega Man 3, I remember, it was some arranged levels, and he actually took on the Mega Man 2 bosses again. So that was Mega Man 3, and then, uh, I found 3 was definitely much easier to beat than 2. And same with 4, which then added the extra adventure of... Dr. Cossack, and it's like, I remember there was a scene where eventually Cossack, you know, when you beat him, that his daughter, you know, the Russian, <laughs> that came out and she was playing to stop, stop, he, he's not really hurting you. And it, and it becomes her found that he was like, very much with Dr. Wily, which goes back to, you know, villains. Bowser is definitely the villain in the Super Mario world. Dr. Wily. And actually, growing up, I used to call him Dr. Willy, but then drop an L. So, Dr. Wily, he's actually, he's an underrated villain, video game villain. And he definitely has perseverance. I mean, uh, he's making these robot masters to come after beat Mega Man the robot, but uh, Mega Man ultimately wins with Dr. Wily going, please, please, please. I, I definitely had fun with that, with those earlier Mega Mans, and those were the best Mega Mans. I mean, they're... Other series got spawned, but classic 8-bit Mega Man is the king. Capcom did well making those games. You know, soundtrack, just choose your own venture, and, uh, you know, now with new challenges, I mean, man. The replay value is through the roof, and, uh, I mean, those are the two big series there. And my NES memories here. You know, other memories, I mean, uh, I remember I didn't own these games. But I remember this could be another underrated series. Doesn't seem to get talked about. It's called The Adventures of Lolo. I mean, they, they look like those 7-Up dots, different colors. And I remember it being a, 
you know, it's a, it's a maze puzzle game. You kind of mix in a little bit of Bomberman, but, uh, you know, the adventures are low, low. And I think it's another one of, you know, a guy and girl, the girl gets captured. I think that was in the later games. And there was three games in the Adventures of Lolo, and I, I didn't own those, but I remember playing those, and those are fun. And I meant to check it out L O L O Lolo, if I'm saying it right. So I definitely enjoyed those games. I mean, when it comes to the uh, you know older school Black Series game, I mean when it goes back to the Zapper, I remember having Hogan's Alley, which is an old-fashioned. It's almost like a police training thing where you see bad guy, good guy, and you try to, uh, you know, avoid not shooting the good guy, but shoot the bad guy, and then there was a can game. I also remember, uh, you know, Balloon Fight. I think I rented that game. I never owned it. So I remember that. And then a couple uh, arcade games that uh, they were great when you were feeding quarters at the arcade, but they... The, that version was different than Nintendo because of the specs of the machine. But I remember both Pac-Man. Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man. I mean, old school Pac-Man. But, uh, I don't know. I, th I think I find... I think I always find Miss Pac-Man a little easier than Pac-Man. But the one thing I love about the Miss Pac-Man game is after you cut through a few cutscenes and... Uh, or mazes, you get a cutscene. And it always... I remember one that showed uh, Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man meeting. But the one I always find funny in Miss Pac-Man is after you go through more mazes, then it shows the love scene chase. So you see a little Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man and chase and after other. It's just how, how it looks in the chase with the fast, you know, pack thing. But yeah, just don't touch the ghosts. They're okay if they're flashing. And uh, that was definitely... Namco was another favorite uh, company that... Uh, I love Mega Games, and uh, they definitely make combinations together, which I'll talk about that when I talk about later consoles. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Pac-Man. And another, uh, remember, arcade games that I liked that they ported on the uh, NES, and there was many variations of it. Well, I remember Marble Madness. That was a short game, but it was challenging. I don't know if I remember finishing it, but uh, still to date, it's still a great game. Marble Madness. It's a simple puzzle game where you move around. And Paperboy. I seem to... I actually seem to like Paperboy. It wasn't that bad. And I have the original classic version in another collection, which I'll talk about that when I'll see... when I do another Gaming Memories video there. But speaking of puzzle games, I have to mention this game, which also probably sold the Nintendo... Lots of units alone is Tetris. Good old Tetris. That's one thing we definitely love from Russia. Not uh, the music, but whoever thought uh, blocks, games of four blocks together, either form a straight line, a cube, or an L, or a T, would be so much fun. And the idea is you make lines and clear them. And you always love that cool trick where... You always try to strategically build up your tower, fill up your lines, but you have one narrow column. So you can put the straight line one in there, clear four lines, and you call it Tetris. And Nintendo really, really made that cool when uh, you get a Tetris. But I remember spending lots and lots of hours on that. And, uh, and you know, it started at level zero, and you gradually get up, and it gets faster and faster. And eventually I felt proud that after level nine, you could start at level nine. Where the box go really fast. But I remember, I was really proud that I think I got to like 19. So I was like, level 9. Like, but that was game A where you start with an empty empty board. And then I think type B is where you already have obstacles made. And you got to work around that. And then, of course, Tetris, Super Mario got marched together with Dr. Mario. That was definitely another great game, which kind of mixed in Tetris and Super Mario, where you throw pills and you uh, try to kill the viruses, matching the colors, three in a row of that color. You have to get three in a row, or either the pill disappears, or you try to line up with the virus to get those viruses, throwing it in the message jar. And once again, great music, fun puzzle game. Other puzzle games that I actually liked and... Uh, 
that I, I know I own some of them was Othello. I remember that's that uh, checkers game where it's black or white, and I need to relearn how that game works. But I remember having that game. Other puzzle games I liked. Mind you, I saw a, ch a cheat. Well, it's cheating now today's comparison, but uh, there was a game called Anticipation, which is another board game where you draw it and you represent a piece and you go around. And I remember, I remember that being a great game. It's called Anticipation. I remember the uh, the cover just had like a lip and biting. Uh, and then there obviously was Win, Lose, and Draw. I actually liked that, and uh, you know, there's a Win, Lose, and Draw. Oh yeah, now there's another game. When you think of something outrageous, it's called Pipe Dream. That was actually a game. I don't know who made it. I remember it was some Lion logo. But, Pipe Dream, I actually owned that. And that was a fun puzzle game too, where you're, you know, maybe kind of almost mix in Super Mario. Or you'd be a plumber, but basically you're trying to come up with a pipe where you go from one end of the screen to the other. You're trying to connect pipes. And you want to try to make it so it loops, so you get from one end of the screen to the other. Easier said than done. Especially when there's uh, obstacles in the way, which is the point of the game. But yeah, that was a fun game too, and it got harder and harder as the ooze goes faster, the obstacles increase. I enjoyed Pipe Dream, and I remember owning that and spending lots of hours on that. I mean, I'm trying to come up with games that, uh, th that you might not get hits on right away. There might be one series you're about to say, what about this series, The Legend of Zelda? I actually did not play The Legend of Zelda when I had the Super Nintendo, or the NES. I was about to say Super Nintendo, but uh, I'll talk about my first Zelda game I played, and uh, I'll say arguably it might be the best one. But I actually did not play The Legend of Zelda on the NES when I had it. I eventually played the NES version of the game, and actually I haven't finished it, but... Uh, that what comes later when I do a later game video, so there won't be any Zelda talk in here other than this because uh, I actually did not play it, and I'm sort of kind of kicking myself that I didn't. But I also kind of say maybe I was glad I waited until when I did when I first played it, and man, it it pushes Super Mario as the seller. But I'll talk about that later. Another game that was consumed a lot of my time. I mean, I did, like, game show games. Like, I mean, there was Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune. I think Win, Lose, and Draw was also a, a game show game. But another game that uh, consumed a lot of my time was Bubble Bobble. That was also a fun game. You had fruits and food and bubbles. And you just burp up bubbles and uh, you make sure you get those toy enemies. I remember those... Uh, Toy blue guys always after you, and I like those steam levels. I think it goes up to like a hundred, and I never actually played it from one to a hundred, but I remember getting a password and I finally found the hundred. Which keep in mind was before the internet, and you had to buy magazines or code books or ask friends or somehow find out. That I remember again the level hundred, it was effing insane, but. And had scary music. I, don't, I forget who the main boss is in Bubble Bubble. But yeah, it definitely was an interesting game. Although, you don't want to take too long. Because I remember when it says hurry up and everything goes insane and the enemies are even angrier. But uh, yeah, it's another game I loved. And then, I mean, there were a lot of sports games. I mean, Blades of Steel. That was like the best hockey game without having a, an NHL franchise. And I forget what game what hockey game it was, but it was the first one that officially was able to get a video game or a license from the NHL so they can actually use names and players. And uh, I remember my favorite Calgary Flame growing up, I mean, you can say, well, the one that I would be most noted to be with is Jill Otto, and we all love Lanny as well, but Jill Otto definitely was a bigger part of me. Childhood for being favorite flame, but uh, <clears throat> I remember I think it was a Wayne Gretzky NHL game. This game had rights to publish and put the logos and that in the in the game. But I remember looking for Joel Otto when I, that was a thrill when I went to Calgary Flames. <clears throat> of course, uh, Tech Mobile. 
that was definitely a great football game. But without the NFL licensee, it had the city names. And they couldn't say Super Bowl. They said Playoff Championship Series and then Tecmo Bowl. So that was a great <coughs> football game before it's time for Madden. So, uh, and of course, I love bowling. I remember there was a, one bowling game that was okay. I think there was only like one or two in like Championship Bowling. I mean, I'm a bowler, but it was 10 pin. I would played 5 pin in Canada. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry for the chunk on down my throat here. But uh, yeah, and then golf. There was that golf. That was one of those black games. And I think that was the only golf game that I can think of that I played on the NES that wasn't PGA. And it was just called golf. And it looked like Super Mario golfing. But uh, yeah, those are definitely. Uh, all the great games and of course uh, I had California games which it was kind of cheesy now looking at it but uh, I remember that game you know just California games almost like California Olympics and then uh, I remember some so-so games but had some an okay soundtrack because uh, <clears throat> the adventures of bio Billy I remember that game it was difficult as heck but uh, they had cool music and, uh, and that and I also, this is before I get to the you know terrible games and where you learn about movies and video games don't necessarily replicate each other but uh, I mean I remember that game, playing that and then I know that uh, one of the top games for Nintendo although I think it was the second game I played was uh, Contra 2 because I remember trading that with uh, with a you know friend and and they gave me the code to get 10 lives instead of 3. That, yeah, that was the second game. Because I'm not too sure if I spent much time. I don't have much memories of playing the first one. But it was Contra 2 or C2. Uh, I mean, I know that's definitely one of the top games. When you go outside to Super Mario, Mega Man, Zelda. <clears throat> everyone looks at Contra. And no, I didn't buy a NES Classic. Because I'm disappointed I only had 30 games. Unless, unless there's a way... I know there's emulation, and that's in a gray area, but that's how I try to maybe sneak in some entertainment. But if there's something I can buy that has every NES game, I want that. Because ultimately, that's what I want. I, I want to be able to have all the games. And I, not select games, because then you, you're, having, you'll be, you're just paying, obviously, the ones you want, but then you miss out on others. And then the fact that they only made so many, and made the demand to go through the roof, that it just wasn't worth the trouble. But yeah, I mean, those are many of the games. I mean, I also remember uh, there was a, I said C2, and then uh, I do remember uh, also, I mean, if you go look on the internet here, there would be a couple bad games I'll think of before I might go to a few others I have memories of. But there is a publisher called LGN, and it's basically the enormous J. Lewis company, but they switched the initials. They had a licensing for a lot of movies, but they were notorious for uh, not having great games. I like this guy. His, his channel is Cinemasker. He has over 3 million subscribers. And one of the things he does is called the Angry Video Game Nerd, and he's very notorious for bashing LGN games. Very entertaining. Recommend his channel if you like gaming, or unless you found him already and you happen upon my video. Thanks for watching. And then there's Cygnus Destroyer. And one of the things he did is actually he's the LGN Defender. And there's a couple of LG games that I thought were terrible, looking back. And others that, you know, wasn't that bad. I know the one that wasn't that bad, although I find the boss really, really unreasonable, is Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I actually didn't mind that game growing up, but I did remember... Uh, Fighting that Judge Doom was definitely much, much more difficult than it was just an unreasonable matchup at the end. It was very, very difficult to beat that. And uh, I actually did fell for uh, one of my favorite movies growing up it was Back to the Future. I definitely idolized Marty. He, he's a Canadian, Michael J. Fox. Actually, he's an Albertan just like me. I definitely, he definitely did a great job in 
being Marty, and I always called Marty even when he was on Family Ties. And, uh, you know, unfortunately he's battling his Parkinson's disease, but uh, he's, he was definitely a great actor, and uh, I did have Back to the Future. And yeah, that game uh, was as good, and actually I never got out of Lou's Cafe. And, uh, I mean, I had to go on YouTube see how that game finished, and that was it. And actually, I also rented uh, Back to the Future Part 2 and 3, and, man, that, that's a long game. It's too long, especially if you want kids to play it with no password or save system. Once again, I had to go on YouTube and find out how the heck you do in this game, and what the heck are you supposed to do? It definitely did not follow the movie, as you remember it. But, uh... I mean, the DeLorean's in there. Marty looks more like Marty in the Part 2 and 3, but uh, I only never got to Part 3. I didn't know there was a password to get to Part 3. Once again, you know, no internet, no YouTube, no uh, guidebooks, and, you know, you know, even though you had more time on your hands to play video games, but you uh, got school and... Uh, lives to manage and you know mom and daddy you go somewhere you gotta go to so it definitely wasn't practical for a kid then to play a game that long but yeah there was a few lgn titles i played that uh was uh definitely uh had had some bad but you know oh well, yeah friday the 13th that was definitely a tough game definitely did not follow the movie you had jason i mean that game was definitely, uh, I actually owned that game, and I spent a lot of time on it, but definitely I had to use the Game Genie to beat it. And you know, I still feel like I barely beat Jason. He wants, it's one of those things where you go through the game once, and then you get stronger, and then you have to play it again when he's even stronger. Remember weapons and all that. Just make sure you have the knife. That's one of the best items, and maybe machete, if I remember that game. Crystal Lake. And I remember the only way to beat that game is to beat Jason before the eight people were all dead. So that was Friday the 13th. And I also remember renting Jaws. And that game is uh, that's another LGN game. I'm trying to think of LGN games, games since it's on the mind. That was just a rental. And uh, that game was just tedious. And uh, that was that. And then, then going back to other games. I forgot to mention this game. This game was definitely frustrating to play, but it was one fun, fun, fun game. It was Batman. That was a great game. It was just called Batman. I remember having that game. It was definitely a thrill to beat Joker in that one, but, uh, you know, it had nice music. It represented Batman. It was just a generic Batman game going through uh, Gotham City. So you go, you know, and you're Batman. So definitely had my thrill with Batman there. And then, uh, also, the fact that uh, I remember another game that's notoriously known for being terrible, but this was towards towards the end of when I had my NES, was The Simpsons vs. The Space Mutants. I had that game, and I think I might have actually finished that game, but it was definitely difficult. I remember the first level was all about trying to find the Space Mutants, getting the radioactive glasses. It references the stuff in the first few seasons of the... Uh, show there so that's if you were to play that game either an emulator or some i'll have it or find this flea market and oh the simpsons i'm buying it and it's actually not a good game it, it references more stuff in the first couple seasons of the simpsons when that's what i felt was the best time of the simpsons but uh then there was another game about travel through time i, f I think i remember just reading that one and it was only slightly better than the one of the space mutants but uh it did follow the uh, source material very well, so uh, that that's definitely. Uh, I mean, it's still, it's all still, still just memories for having a Nintendo Entertainment System and just to throw some gaming content on my channel here. And then I remember some other terrible. I think there was a Destination Earth Star. That was just because I liked space. And remember that game sucked. It wasn't good. Music was annoying. Don't get how I play it. I remember another game that had great music but it was terrible. And it was based on a television show. Airwolf, the uh, helicopter rescue game. I mean, remember that. 
but another series I'd never played, and it never seemed to appeal to me. Although I hear it's very popular with the uh, the uh, crowd is uh, to Castlevania. I never played any Castlevania games, so I never played any of that. I remember playing Exevius, another Namco classic, which just goes on and on and on. So I had that, and then uh, I'm just trying to think of other other games that I played. I think I remember renting Mappy. I think it was an NES port of Mappy, which wasn't quite the original uh, arcade version, but uh, Mappy was definitely a nice, uh, nice game there. And then I'm almost thinking I'm trying to cover almost everything here. I remember uh, renting some robotic baseball game, and I think I think there was a bases loaded. I think that was the first baseball game in the NES, if I remember. That actually had the licensing for uh, to actually use player team names and actual team names and uh, player names. I mean, you have to get a license if you're making a game to actually use their logos. You need permission from the league, and I think that was the first NES game that that. Those are pretty much all the sports games. I mean, covered football, hockey, and baseball, and then. You know, I got the main ones in, got some puzzle games in, but uh, I mean, this is basically a lot of the uh, memories that I have for uh, just the Super Entertainment System, or the Nintendo Entertainment System here, excuse me. I mean, in some way, I still wish I had it, but uh, you know, who knows how long systems last and games last. That's why I believe emulation should be uh, a lot more supported so you can look back on. I mean, a lot of these companies aren't in business anymore, and and if you're just going to some flea market or somewhere online to buy an old cartridge, I mean, you're not uh, supporting that company anymore anyway. You're supporting the big corporation there, but, uh, I mean, that's definitely the most nostalgic video game system I had growing up was the Nintendo Entertainment System, and for me, it's what kept me in the Video games for many, many, many years, but uh, you know, once college and adult life and having responsibilities come in, that's where I still have game in my blood, but uh, I just don't have the time to do it anymore. And I am a trade where it will take going forward that maybe if I'll get to retire, who knows, would I get back into gaming when you have time? If I get to retire, but uh, yeah, it's, it's basically many, many many titles I covered here. I know when I planned out my uh, personal vlog list of all topics, those there's going to be gaming memories of other systems I've had. But there's an overall one that I'll, I'm going to make way down the road. Because inevitably I'll think of something that I wish I should have said for this and the other systems that I'll capture in that one. But uh, I almost think I captured everything for... Uh, you know, the Nintendo Entertainment System, trying to remember all the games that I had and uh, rented. I mean, the big, the biggest, uh, you know, biggest nostalgia was Tetris, the Super Mario games, Mega Man. Those were definitely the, the biggest part of my nostalgia and a couple infamous LGN games. And, uh, you know... You say blah blah blah. There was definitely a lot of great games, and there was definitely this was back when Nintendo kind of had the monopoly there before uh, you know you got the PlayStations and Microsoft, the Xbox, and Sega Genesis. So eventually, how did my tenure end with the NES? Well, I was going to upgrade to a 16-bit system, which that'll be my next personal vlog. You'll find out on the next personal vlog what entertainment system I bought. What system I bought? Because I eventually sold uh, my games and uh, the system to a uh, you know childhood friend of mine that we were friends with the family when they were still in their neighborhood. So I eventually sold that over and bought a new system. It was a, and I went to the 16-bit, but I took a different direction. If you want to give you a hint here, what my next gaming memories video is going to be about. So yeah, I am very nostalgic on the NES. When I get to the second most nostalgic system, I'll tell you that. But it actually is not the next system after I had the NES. So yeah, hopefully I brought back some nostalgia memories for you guys, if you're my age. 
And I'm just wondering for you younger guys that are watching this, you know. Oh yeah, there's another, one more thing before I close out because I just thought of, I did play Metroid growing up. I didn't own it, I remember borrowing it, but uh, I never finished the game, the original one. I had to make sure I got that as well in there because I might be, that would have been in my other personal blog and someone might mention that, but getting back to what do you think you younger gamers today like that was the games back then I mean they're, they were a lot simpler yeah the graphics are definitely showing their age but some way I found those games still a lot more fun yeah the difficulty was definitely a lot more difficult especially Mega Man my butt still hurt from some games that I played that uh, yeah and those battles with Dr. Wily very evil Dr. Wily and Bowser with his flames. But it felt that much more satisfying when you finish it. So anyway, if you enjoy anything, I was thinking if you enjoy anything on my YouTube channel, make sure you like subscribe. I do these personal vlogs, but I also do Calgary Sports where I recap the hockey teams, Calgary Flames, Calgary Hitman, and then I do Stampeders and Calgary Roughnecks, and I capture moments at sporting events and then do this and then I sometimes do attempt a comedy here and uh Maybe throw in a little sprinkle here and there at random. Because I, I mean, I'm mostly on the sports channel, but, uh, you know, I, I want to try to appeal to a larger audience, too. Because, I mean, this is gives me a creative outlet and gives me a chance to share everything out to you guys. And, you know, maybe bump into people that I know or haven't seen in years. And hopefully they say I enjoyed your video doing this. And it's definitely satisfying knowing that my time staying in front of the camera, some people actually watch what I watch. So, uh, as I say, hit like, subscribe, and help that bell icon to uh, be notified if you need to be notified as soon as I upload something. And I have everything in playlists, so uh, you can go to the playlist to see uh, all the particular videos there and decide what you want to watch from there. and Or, you know, just watch how... Uh, I take in Calgary teams as we live through each season here, and uh, there was a couple championships that we won last year that uh, I was jumping up and down there a little. So, uh, anyway, thanks for watching, and enjoy those video games, and, uh, you know, we got a lot, I just love these older video games, and there needs to be a bigger market, and more readily available to have retro gaming to fit modern HD TVs. It, Kind of seems ironic that, you know, we're so marveled in HD or even 4K now, but we still like to play 8-bit. And actually, the 8-bit sounds and looks even better in HD instead of the old 4x3 tubular grainy TVs where you see those small rainbows or red, green, and blue. That's what TVs used to have there, kids. But uh, now it's a flat screen and now you can play it on your smartphone or your tablets. Which, man, I wish I had that back in the day, but I didn't. But I'm just intrigued where video games is going to keep going forward, and uh, hopefully I'll have more time to play them and relive these, feel youthful again. So anyway, thanks for watching. The NES was definitely an awesome console way back in the day, but we definitely got more choice now, and, uh, you know, I wish I had more time to... Play the games, but you know, you have more other priorities as you get older and you like to enjoy other things that you might be nostalgic for in the future when you look back on the past. So, thank you.